Today is the day of the great sacrifice. You and I hear the word sacrifice. If you know what it means, it is not something easy. Someone says, I have to sacrifice. That means I have to do something that requires great determination. It requires belief, conviction and strength. And without that, you will not be able to sacrifice. So what you need to know is, as much as it is the greatest celebration in the Islamic calendar, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that I have sacrificed or am prepared to sacrifice for the sake of my Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam, the father of the prophets, Abraham, may peace be upon him. He was very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mainly because he followed every instruction that Allah gave him, whether he understood it or not. When Allah told him to leave his family in Mecca and proceed, he did not question. When Allah told him to sacrifice his son, he did not question. When Allah told him to build the Kaaba, he did not question. And so on. The list is almost endless. So many things Ibrahim alayhi salam did simply because he knew the instruction is coming from Allah. The instruction is coming from Allah. When Allah instructs, that's it. Allah Almighty knows what he is saying. He will never tell you something that is harmful for you. In fact, anything that Allah has prohibited is harmful. If you don't understand how it is harmful, that's not Allah's fault. It's your weakness. And anything that Allah has made compulsory is the only way you're going to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't understand how or why, it is your weakness. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's weakness at all. When Allah tells you, you pray five times a day, this time, this time, the, the next time, the next one and the following, you listen, it's your sacrifice. Do you know when you look at Ismail alayhi salam and you look at all the other messengers, in fact, look at the message of the Quran. Allah Almighty tells you that bear patience when it comes to obeying the instruction of Allah. Instruct your family to pray and be patient when it comes to fulfilling the command of Allah. Do you know what that means? Patience is divided into three in the Islamic context. Number one, the patience that is required or should I say the strength that is required to fulfill the commands of Allah. It's called sabr. That part of sabr is actually the strength that is required to fulfill the instruction of Allah. When Allah tells you do this, it's not going to be a joke. It's not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. And you require a certain type of sabr, which is a strength together with determination and belief. If you don't have belief and conviction, you won't have sabr. If you don't have the strength, you can't have sabr. You need to have the willpower, the conviction. You need to want to please Allah. When Allah tells you do something, instruct your family to pray and strengthen yourself through sabr in order to fulfill it correctly. That means you're not going to be able to fulfill salah if you're a lazy person or you're not determined or you don't have a connection with Allah. So Allah says, be strong and do it. When Allah tells you to do something, you need to know it is for my benefit. If Allah tells you, you have to give out a certain amount of your wealth that we gave you, then you need to know by doing that, not only are you going to please Allah, but there is benefit for you. It cleanses you. It purifies you. It brings you down to earth to realize that all the wealth that I have is not going to actually help me the day I die unless I have spent it in the correct way and done the right thing. I earn it in a proper way and I spend it in the right way. That is why Allah makes it complete compulsory for you to give. Imagine someone's earned. They can say if they not, if they don't believe this is mine. Why should I do what you want me to do? But we believe we will say we earned it how Allah wanted us to earn. We stayed away from what Allah did not want us to, to earn. And when we spent, we spent it how Allah told us. The same applies when Allah tells you fast in Ramadan from this time to this time. If you miss it by a few seconds, it's gone. When Allah tells you don't eat and drink and don't do this, you have to understand it is the obedience that's the sacrifice. I will not do it. Allah does not want me to do it. You see in the pillars of Islam, some of them Allah tells you to do things and some of them Allah tells you to abstain from things. 
For example, when it comes to Ramadan, Allah is telling you stay away from what? Food and drink. And when it comes to prayer, Allah is telling you do it. It's more like testing you plus and minus, right? Multiplication and division. All these tests from Allah in order that when you go back to Allah, you would have done the right thing and earned his pleasure. Similarly, when it comes to Hajj, why does Allah love it so much? And if you look at the first pillar of Islam, which is the Shahada, we are saying there is no one worthy of worship, none worthy of worship, nothing worthy of worship besides Allah. Why do we say this? Because we are de declaring that whatever my Lord instructs me, that's my instruction. He is the only one worthy of telling me. Allah owns creation. He made it. Who made you? Whoever made you, does he not have the right to instruct you? He made you, man. Today, you, you are a father and you feel that's my son, that's my daughter. Let me instruct them. They should listen to me because I'm the father. What about your creator who created you completely? Don't you feel he has the right to instruct you and I? He definitely does. He's the owner and the only owner of supreme instruction. Lahul Amru. For him belongs the instruction. When he tells you something, that's it. It's final. A true believer, male or female, when Allah or his messenger وسلم, instructs, they do not feel that they have a choice in that regard. They know there is no choice in this regard. This is the way it is and this is the way it shall be. And I follow and I obey. So Ibrahim alayhi salam was instructed to sacrifice his son, Ismail. And what did he do? No questions asked. He went to follow the instruction of Allah. Allah replaced it with a ram. And Allah kept the memory of it up to the day of judgment. More important than the slaughter itself is what is known as the taqwa. Allah says the meat is not going to get to, to Allah. The blood is not going to get to Allah. But rather what gets to Allah is the consciousness, the development of the correct relationship as a result of the sacrifice. What is known as the taqwa. When you have that correct sense of relationship with Allah, what we would term the consciousness, the fear of Allah in the correct sense, that is what gets to Allah. Allah wants that. So now the crux of it is the following and listen to this very attentively. You and I have bad habits. Some of them are bigger than others. Are you prepared to put a knife today on those habits? There is a man who was prepared to put a knife where it didn't make sense to general human beings to slaughter and sacrifice your own son. But if Allah instructed it, he said, well, I'm prepared to do it. Allah is not telling us to sacrifice our children. No, not at all. It won't be and it will never be. But Allah is telling us sacrifice for the sake of Allah cutting out your habits, put a knife to your bad habit. Today is the day. Then you have the reason to rejoice for the sake of Allah. I cut out something for my maker. Only for Allah I can do this. Someone else, you may not be able to do it for them. In fact, people do it because someone they love tells them, don't do this. You know, you get married and your spouse tells you, well, if you do this, I'm going to leave you. And say, no, 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 I won't do it. Allah will leave you, imagine. Then what will happen? But still through his mercy, he says, no, I give you another chance, another chance. you breathing. Yes. Well, then you can always come back to us. Make tawbah. Seek the forgiveness. Come to me. I will forgive you. Today is the day of rejoicing. If you are prepared to cut your bad habits and to sacrifice to fulfill your obligations unto Allah, go and enjoy the day. Go and enjoy it. You deserve it. But if you're not prepared to move an inch regarding your bad habits and you're not prepared to move an inch regarding fulfilling the instruction of Allah, be it your dress code, be it your prayer, be it your whatever else it may be that you know you need to get done for the sake of Allah. In that case, do you deserve to celebrate? How can you say, MashaAllah, Eid Mubarak, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, none worthy of worship besides Allah, Allah is the greatest, Allahu Akbar, Wallillahi alhamd, 
Allah is the greatest, to Him belongs all praise. But you're still engaged in your bad ways, your bad habits, and you don't even want to think about it for you. This is just a day of food and drink and let's go and check out the meat and how much we're cutting and how much we're going to eat and the braai we might have or the barbecue they call it in some countries. And subhanAllah, that's what it's all about. Let's go and eat and drink. You're only supposed to rejoice when you deserve the party, so to speak. You don't just have a party every day for nothing. There's a reason. This is the biggest party that we could ever have as believers. It is the biggest day of rejoicing. You and I deserve it. Look, the hujjaj who made hajj, the day preceding the day of Eid is the biggest day, the biggest day and the day of Eid. The day of Arafah precedes the day of Eid. What are they doing? All of them are calling out to Allah, crying for forgiveness and for their needs, right? They are asking Allah, forgive us and help our brothers and sisters everywhere. At the moment in Palestine, you know what's going on. Allah knows better than you and I. Our brothers and sisters are being butchered. That's the word. We ask Allah to grant them victory, to grant them protection. We would be failing in our duty if we don't mention our brothers and sisters suffering throughout the globe. We think of them, we pray for them. Each one should do whatever is in his or her capacity to help, to assist, to alleviate to the best of their ability. And each one's on a different level. But nonetheless, you and I know that the day of Arafah, everyone is crying to Allah to meet their needs, to help them in their own personal lives, in their families, communities, in the ummah, in humanity at large. And what happens the very next day? In fact, in the evening, they go to Muzdalifa and thereafter they go to Mina. Why are they going to Mina? To pelt shaitan. Shaitan must not come in the way between you and the instruction of Allah. Never pelt him. I seek protection in Allah from shaitan, the accursed. And you repeat that and you say it because Allah tells you in the Quran that whenever the shaitan tries to lead you astray, seek Allah's protection and Allah will protect you. And then they pelted this devil, Jamrat al Aqaba. It is called with seven pebbles, more than the pebble. Shaitan physically is not there. There is only a demarcation of where he was at one point. More important than the devil that you are pelting in that particular way is to remove the devil within. Within, I have bad habits. I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to take them out. I'm not going to allow shaitan to come and attack me one after the other to bog me down, to make me continue in my bad ways, to make me lazy regarding the obligation unto Allah. To get up for Salatul Fajr requires great determination it requires belief strength and determination without those three you're not going to get up for salatul fajr are you determined do you really want to prepare for the day you're going to meet with allah which could be today may allah take us in a way that he's pleased with us if you want to just tell allah right now oh allah help me to sacrifice for your sake help me to understand the truth of this particular day the sacrifice the greatest sacrifice the sacrifice of ibrahim alayhi salam the reward of it is so great. Allah says it's the biggest day. The best thing you could do is to sacrifice, to sacrifice your animals. What's the point of eating the meat? Every time you have some meat or you see those animals, tell yourself, do I really deserve this? Have I really sacrificed anything for Allah? And here I am celebrating a sacrifice for Allah. So this is it. This is the message that I have. And this is exactly where we stand as believers. The day of sacrifice is a great day. Mend your relationships with your family members. Because that is an instruction of Allah in the Quran. You have issues in your circles, mend the relationships or try your best to mend them for the sake of Allah. Remember, it's not easy to get on with people, different temperaments. Everyone on earth has a different method, a different style, even brothers. They have a different way of thinking. Sometimes it could be similar to a degree, but it's not the same. Why did Allah make you that way? to reward you when you navigate through that bearing Allah in mind. That's why Allah's made it that way. Learn to love each other for the sake of Allah. The ummah needs you and I. This is the day of sacrifice. We are going to enjoy. We're going to rejoice. Look at the takbir. We say the extra takbir, right? That day of the hujjaj, the day of Eid, they go and pelt for the sake of Allah. Thereafter, they slaughter animals for the sake of Allah. Thereafter, they shave their hair or they cut their hair for the sake of Allah. Thereafter, they go back to Makkah and do tawaf, known as tawaf al ifada or tawaf al ziyara with sa'i, between Safa and Marwa for the sake of Allah. Why does Allah want you to do all of this? 
in order for you to realize you are in need of Allah. You and I are in need of Allah. Allah does not need us. We need Him. Listen to this verse. Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. In yashak yudhibkum wa yakti bi khalqin jadeed. Wa ma thalika ala Allahi bi aziz. O people, you are in desperate need of Allah. You are in need of Allah and Allah is totally independent. Allah is full of praise, the owner of praise. Whether you praise him or you don't praise him. Whether you worship him or you don't worship him. Whether you follow him or you don't follow him. It does not decrease his value at all. He is the creator. Then Allah says, if he wants, he can delete you. He can do away with you. He can remove you. He can destroy all of you and replace you with a different creation altogether. And then he says, and that is not difficult for Allah. He can do that. May Allah Almighty not replace us. May we be the ones who worship Allah. Yes, you and I are human beings. We have human weaknesses. Sometimes we have a tendency to like certain things. Allah says, regulate it. You want something? Make sure you get it in a way that is pleasing to Allah, not in a haram way. And if there is no way to get it except through the displeasure of Allah, then you leave it. Someone involved in homosexual acts, for example, there is no way that you're going to regularize that. You have to cut it for the sake of Allah. If you'd like to earn the pleasure of Allah, you're going to have to cut certain things. Someone can't say, well, how can I regularize this? If you want to steal someone else's property, you can't do that. If you want to get something that's not yours, for example, or that Allah does not allow someone who is addicted to alcohol, addicted to adultery, and they say, how can I make this alcohol permissible? There is no way to make it permissible. You will have to abstain. That's what it is. This was just a short message in order to remind us. And once again, I end with it as well. Let's sacrifice for the sake of Allah. Beautiful sacrifice. And we'll enjoy the day. Don't do that which is displeasing to Allah. The days are numbered of all of ours. And remember something. People are suffering across the globe. They need us. They need you and I. And one of the best ways is for us to change ourselves. That's the beginning. And then everything else will happen. How do we change ourselves? Sacrifice for the sake of Allah. This day of Eid comes every year. Why? Because Allah wants to remind you again and again. A year has passed. What did you do? Another year has passed. What did you do? A third year has passed. 30 years have passed. 50 years have passed. You're about to go into your grave. What did you do? Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Something that brings me so much of joy is when you know that your Lord is the most kind, the most compassionate, the most forgiving, the most amazing, the most unique, the greatest, the one who is absolutely magnificent. That's my Lord and yours. Don't lose hope in his mercy. Seek his forgiveness. No matter what you've done, he will forgive you.